see how I have to get all this stuff so quickly. All right, lunges. Right leg starts lunging forward. One, lunging backwards. Two, lunge to the side. Three, left leg, front, back, side, right leg, forward, backwards, side, and switch. Forward, backwards, and side. And we're on. Right leg, forward, back, side, left side, forward, backwards, and side. Good job. All right, all the way down, 16 deep squats, so as low as you can go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and last one. Good job. All right, next one is going to be backward lunge with the right leg and then switch the leg, kick with the left. Ready, right leg back, switch, kick. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, last one, and 10, switch the leg. Left leg, lunge back, switch, kick. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. And one more time. Bam. There we go. Right. Back to squatting. Half squat. If you want to go lower, fine with me. Not necessarily with this one. It's still a warm up. So it's going to be a little half squat uh, position. And when you're coming up, knee goes to the opposite the elbow. Back to squat. Another side. 20 in total. Ready. And go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, keep rotating that upper body, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, last one, pop, good. Little shake, let's jog in place. Just to relax the legs, upper body. Relax your shoulders, your arms, your neck. And just tap on the ball of your feet. That's very really light movement. It's like jumping. And then we're going to go knees up, ready, and up, up, up. Tight belly, shoulders nice and low, chest out. And then bum kicks. Bum, it's not a bum kick. What is it called? <laughs> Tails to bum. Bum kick. No. Losing words as well. This is really concerning. And high knees. <sighs> and 
and bum kick, <laughs> which is not called a bum kick, but you know what I mean. Not what is going up a little bit, that's good. And high knees. And slow down. Good job. Woo. All right. Let's go mad. Lean forward, so forward bend first. You can start with soft knees and focus on your lower back. Like for me, at least at the moment, it feels very tight. So I like to just lean forward and not work on my hamstrings. So I'm just trying to get an angle that works for my lower back. I drop my arms, turn on the side a little bit. And when the lower back starts to kind of loosen up a little bit, then I'm, I'm going to focus on extending my legs, getting my knees all the way back, nice and straight, locked, uh, locked legs. And also focusing on relaxing the shoulders and my neck. So it's easy to kind of keep them kind of tight. To really try to get the whole upper body work as a dead weight. There's no movement, there's no tension. Super loose arms and your head and take a couple of deep breaths here and then we wrap our arms around the legs whether it's around the ankles or hands behind the ankles or grab, grab your um, arms behind your knees whatever feels let's say comfortable <laughs> we're not the right word here and focus on getting that extension in the legs. And with every exhale, you start pulling yourself closer to your legs. It's about 10 breaths to get really close. One more time. Slowly release. Still in the forward bend. Bend your legs a little bit. Move your upper body from side to side. And we're gonna go walk our hands all the way to a plank. Oh. And then bring your body on the floor so knees first then the hips down and then press your upper body up with your extended arms oh, try to get a little bit of counter stretch here get the spine go the other way so it's lower back muscles are very tight so they kind of resist first a bit by bit you start to get access to uh, more stretch so keep breathing, start looking more and more upwards, keep your shoulders down, push away from the mat and try to keep your hips on the floor. And then another counter stretch. So we're going to go into child's pose. So bring your hips all the way back to your heels. Press your shoulders down, your head on the mat or close to. Walk your hands, your fingers put forward so you get a nice stretch on the shoulders. A couple of deep breaths here.
Let's walk our hands to the left. So getting nice stretch into the left side, right side of the body. And on the other side, walk your fingers and hands all the way to the other side. To the middle, back to Cobra. So we bring the hips on the floor. Really focusing on getting that stretch in the lower back and your abs on the front side. Again, that flexibility in the midsection. And then back on your feet, bring your hips up, legs straight, arms straight, down dog. Just finding that nice stretch in the shoulder area, pressing your head down. You can go pretty low here if you have flexibility and strength in the shoulders. You can get your head close to the floor just by pressing your upper body downwards. But don't do anything crazy. Low wings to raise. Is it steady? And then lift your right leg up. Bring your feet closer to one another for balance. Your right leg straight up, kicking your heel out there. So try to extend that leg as far much as you can. And then lifting that leg up with your glute muscles. You feel the glute engaging when you lift your leg up, right? So you can really squeeze that glute quite heavily when you lift your leg up another couple of inches. Very, very good. And then down with the right and up with the left. And at the same time, when you're lifting your left leg up, you still try to press your upper body down, your shoulders. Feels great. And back down with the left. Then release your, bring your hands closer to one another. Bring your left arm next to your left side of the body or behind your back, whatever it might create better balance. And try to drop the right shoulder. It's a bit heavier now for all the weight is on the right leg, the right arm. Still try to press it down within your ability. Left hand comes back. Finding the balance, bring it in the middle, and then right leg, <laughs> right arm. Obviously, you can also lift the right leg if you want, but I would only do it with the arm. And then the right arm comes back, back in the knees, and back to child's pose. And walking those hands forward again, getting good stretch in the shoulder area. Let's come up to plank, plank position. And bring your right arm straight forward. An extension to the body line. Keep it nice and straight. And then switch. Left arm straight forward. Shoulder works hard. And then right arm one more time.
And one more time, let's go. Good. Stay in the plank and bring your body very slow. So you start bending your elbows, going slowly down, just one inch at a time. Still not hitting the floor. Just hang in there, hang in there. And then on the floor, one more time, cobra. So straight arms, stretching that back side. And arms at the same time. And then from the plank, long stride with the right leg forward, back knee on the floor. So then a run and stretch. And if you remember this one, you start bringing your upper body lower and lower. Try to get your elbows on the floor. So you're really working on your hip area here to open it up. Deep breath. And then bring your upper body up from that so you can extend the front leg. So your heel is on the floor, your toes are pointing up, and you keep leaning forward with your upper body. And put your foot back on the floor, back knee comes off, and we start to open up the upper body. So right arm goes up, but every exhale brings more rotation into your upper body movement. So try to follow the thumb or your hand up there, see that it moves with every exhale. Slowly return back to the <laughs> And bring your right foot back. Let's left and then take a long stride left. And bring your back knee down again. First leaning forward, getting those elbows close to the mats. Don't force it, just let your upper body weight do the work. Just leaning forward. Try not to resist too much with your arms. Let, let the body weight do the stretch. And then upper body up, extend the front leg, toes pointing at the ceiling, and then lean forward again. And again with the body weight. Working on the stretch, so you're not really forcing it too much. Foot back on the floor, back knee off. Find balance position, leaning on your right arm, and start opening up your upper body. Raise your left arm up and rotate with every exhale. Slowly return back to the middle, back to plank. Three slow push ups. First one going down and up. 
Lie down. And up. And And walk your hands back to your feet. And back to standing. Okay, good. Let's have some water and start working on the core a little bit more specifically. <clears throat> All right, so I, I say core, but it's going to be upper body as well. Let's see, we want to start with the basics. There we are. Okay, is everybody ready? So we're going to start with some uh, reptile movements. So blank position, same side knee to coming into touch the same type of elbow. And you can do it with your own pace. You can do it very fast. You can do it very, very slow. That is completely up to you. So we're going to do these one minute exercises at 10 before the break. In the plank position, reptile, and go. <sighs> Try to get the knee to touch the elbow. So it's a nice little squeeze at the end, getting that touch there. Almost there, guys. Almost there. Time. All right, second one. Such a nice move. So we're going to keep it with the reptile. And the second one, we're going to bring the knee across to the opposite wrist. If you can't get all the way to the wrist, then you stop a little bit earlier. Ready? And keep your feet wide with this one to balance and go. <sighs> Try to breathe always through the movement so you don't run out of oxygen. Time. Ooh, that's a good start. Waking up the abs a little bit. Okay, next one is on the back. Lie down. Bring your feet up. Straight up. And try to kick your heels out as you go. We're going to go into windshield wiper, side to side. Arms wide, legs up. Hover. And the other side. <sighs> If you find it too heavy to stop the legs before the floor, then bend the legs a little bit, it makes the movement lighter. The more straight your legs are, and the faster you go, the tougher it gets. Thank <sighs> you. 
and time. Stay on your back. Next one is bicycle crunch. So we bring that opposite elbow and knee, just like with some other exercises. We try to get the rotation in the body as well. The upper body rotates a lot when you come up and extend the other leg every time. Go. Trying to get that touch with your knee and elbow. It's a good crunch as well here. Yes, that's where the name comes from. You can already feel my abs. <laughs> Lack of practice. Ah. Keep going. Rotate the body and look left and look right. Bring that elbow forward. Ah. Lift your upper body up. Ah. Five seconds. Ah. Ten. Okay, let's turn around on your fours, hands and knees, and we're gonna go bird dog crunch. So opposite arm and leg, full extension, short hold, and then switch. Ready and hold. And switch. And it's not only hold, it's also like extension. So you really work with your glute to get that leg out there. Work with your shoulder to really punch that arm way straight and far from the body. Extension and squeeze. Extension and squeeze. Shoulder and glute. Bum kicks. Now it came back. It was bum kicks. I don't know. Did I use that word before? Bum kick. It was a bum kick. I know we have to talk about this afterwards. <laughs> Keep squeezing. <sighs> okay, let's try. Hope your arms are feeling okay. We're gonna do one minute push-ups, style free, so you can put your knees down from the start or later on. Ready and go. Ten seconds. And pause. Whew. Okay. Deep squat position for top wear kicks. You lean on one arm, kick the same side leg and the side, then you switch. And go. Try to keep your head in one place. So your upper body is rotating, but not shifting from side to side. If you have a mirror, that will help a lot. Seeing that vertical line with your head and upper body as you kick the leg on the side. Ten seconds, guys. Ten seconds. After this one, we get a little bit easier. 
Okay, you got a lower fly on your back again. You're gonna go glue the bridge. What I would call active rest. So bring your heels close to your bum. Lift your hips up as far as you can and hold. Oof. You gotta feel the tension squeezing the glutes and there's tension in the uh, hip flexor area. After every couple of, let's say after every 10 seconds or so, make sure you push up again so you find that range because your hips will drop a little bit after every couple of seconds. So keep, keep pushing up. Oh, keep pushing, keep pushing. Almost there. And release. Stay on your back. We're going to go for full body crunch. So, full body crunch. Straight arms and legs hovering and coming together in a crunch. All the way up. Down. Up. And down. You can touch your feet, touch your ankles, whatever you can touch, just to make sure you come up enough and try to move your legs and upper body uh, e equal amount so you keep it balanced and they meet in the middle. Ten seconds. Oh, time. Roll on your belly. The last one before the break is going to be the Superman. All right. On your belly, arms and legs. Up for a little hold. And release. Hold and release. And here I can see if my back would be flexible, I probably would get a little bit more off the floor, but as my back is so stiff. I only get a couple of inches. <clears throat> a lot of work to do there. <clears throat> right, break. All right, we're going to have a so break, get some water, give the torso a little break, and then we're gonna move into lower body. Yeah, it's always interesting when you do a lot of exercises in a row using the similar, the same muscle groups. How much stuff it gets when you get a little break. And now we're going to tease the legs in the same way. So it's going to be harder on the legs. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how we feel afterwards. We've got another 30 seconds break, and then we go. So 
Okay. So the first one is the lateral jump. And a reminder for all of you is that when you do it, it's it, it's so easy to kind of just take a wide step. But if you think about squash movement, you do kind of it's kind of sideways lunge what you're doing when you when you go and try to get the ball back. So also this one, I encourage you to focus on a jump sideways and then touch the floor without losing your balance like I just did, and then jump back. And do it a little bit on a lower pace and wider movement instead of doing this kind of narrow back and forth stepping. All right, so everybody ready? We're gonna do one minute. Lateral jumps and go. <sighs> we'll get your upper body well to get that floor touch. <sighs> it is an idea for next time I even mark the width of the jump so you know where you want to put your foot. <sighs> It's heavy when it becomes this more explosive jump. Doing 20 jump hits, any kind of jump, it's taking your key. Feel my glutes already burning. Time. Whew. All right. Next one. High paced, well, for everybody it's a bit different, but ideally high paced, uh, deep squat, no jumping. Ready? Go. Try to keep your upper body nice and straight when you go down. So your gaze is straight forward, not looking down. I felt my hips, it's easier, it's facing the hips. If I bring my knees out a little bit, just realize that it gives me much wider, nicer movement. Time. Okay. Next one we're gonna do backward lunge and then jump with the front leg. And I tell you when to switch the leg. Go. <sighs> Using both legs. Step far back so you get your back knee low. Front leg is working hard here. <laughs> Push it up. <sighs> and then switch the leg. Stepping back. Finding balance first before you start jumping. First balance, then the power. Balance, power. All right, time. Next one, we're gonna go high knees. It's almost like a break in between, in a way, with less strenuous. Ready? High knees. Go. Get that rhythm from your upper body movement, your arms, good posture. Work on those abs. They got a break now. So they should be able to help you. And he flexes.
Ten seconds. Good, stop. Whew, next one. Sitter lunge, our all time favorite. Remember the differences? Leaning forward is more glutes, more straight up. Part of your blocks. Ready? Go. Also, here you can really use explosive power to go really high up. So that will drain you quickly. Great balance exercise this one as well. It's fine, we got good movement. Fifty seconds. Jumps are always great exercises because you have to work with the whole body to balance yourself, get rhythm, and it's great cardiovascular exercise as well. <sighs> Time. Woo. Legs are feeling it. Oh. Next one is a squat jump. <sighs> All right. Ready, and go. Heavy. Come on, guys. It's not heavy. I'm just teasing. It's easy. Ah, come on. Draining the quads. Woo! 15. Come on. Let's go. Ah. 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 Time. Oh, that was painful. Oh. All right, deep squat, no jump. Oh. See if we can get all the way down. Ready? And go. <coughs> Keep that pace up. Down and up. Down and up. Good. Woo. This will work the legs nice. Like any good squash game would do. You know how I hate it when I look at the clock too early, and in my head it's like 50 seconds, and then it's like 30. Mentally draining. We have 10 seconds. Come on. Ah. Ah. And time. Good job. Oh, you're not there yet, guys. Not there yet. All right, let's go down for a plank, hop. So we're gonna go plank and deep squat and go. Yeah. <laughs> 
five seconds. Time. Woo. All right, next one is starting with the plank position. We're gonna do mountain climbers. Get ready. Woo. Go. Oh man, 25 seconds still. <laughs> And one more move today, like always, or like often, we're going to finish with the burpee. Right, it's ready for burpees, guys. Right, go. Come on. Ah. One more, everybody. Ah. Ah. Let's have a little break and then we're going to stretch. Ah. Ah. Some water. Whew. Like I'm out of shape. So if you catch your breath, let's start working on the last stretches a little bit. Start with the back. You can use a towel or elastic band or belt. Bring it around your feet. Just gently start pulling your upper body towards your feet, keeping your legs straight. Then cross your straight left leg with the right leg and grab that bended knee with your opposite hand. Rotate your body as you pull that knee to your upper body. No, excuse me, rotate to the opposite way. Look over your shoulder and breathe. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now the muscles start warm, you can work a little bit harder on the stretching as well. Switch the side, left leg over the right. Wrap the knee with the opposite arm. Rotate your upper body. Look over your shoulder. Oh, why is this side so much tighter? Oh, my Lord. Oh, something so different here. Oh. And as you stretch, you can always add a little bit of intensity when the muscles are giving up. I typically do it with exhale while I exhale. All right, release. Here we go to hurdle runner position. So you're sitting, you bend your right leg, and bring your heel close to your bum, and you lean on your opposite elbow. Try to keep that knee on the floor as you lean backwards. Some people are so flexible that they go all the way down and don't even feel the stretch, especially younger people. I don't know how you guys are feeling this. For me, this is a good way to open up my hip flexor and stretch my quad. Whew. It might feel more comfortable to some of you if you bend that right leg as well. Well, actually the left, the right one is really bended. The other leg. So they're both bent like this. And if you feel like you don't get the stretch, then you can, at home if you do it, you can put like a roller behind you and bring it further and further when you lean on it so you get your upper body lower. Just the step from not leaning on your elbow, but leaning just lying down, there's a big step. So you want to kind of gradually go lower and lower. A pillow, some hard pillow would work. Okay, slowly come up, let's extend the leg, bring it back, and then the other one. Bending the leg, bring the heel close to the bum. And like any other stretch, it's really about you finding that angle and position to make it work for you. Everybody is different. So you gotta not blindly look what other people do, but try to always feel what's working for you. Generally, it's good to stretch the front side a lot as a squash player because it must get tighter than the back. To keep it in balance because it easily creates knee issues and lower back issues. And that will become a bigger issue in the neck. And it's kind of this vicious chain reaction. Okay. Release that leg. And the last one we're going to do is the pigeon. So you lean on your belly or so you're actually leaning over your bended leg, right or left. Be careful with the angle in the leg. I can't go too much outside with my lower leg so it's kind of full under my body it's better for my knee and then so i try to crawl my way forward so i get my arms extended and try to press with my body weight put the pressure on my it's the outer hip which is of, of always tight from squash but at the same time if you walk your fingers your hands forward you should get a reasonable shoulder stress at the same time and also in this position, you can walk your hands left or right, and either side will give you a good side stretch at the same time. And now we're pretty warm, so it doesn't stretch as much as after a game when your muscles are cool down. And slowly come up, extend that leg, and switch. 
lean over this bended leg, but to find a good angle for it. The stretch is more strenuous and intense when you can bring your foot more in the side of the body. So there's a different angle in the leg. I, my knees are not really allowing that. And there are ways to work this with blocks as well, a little pillows to not to get too, too much stress on the knee itself. Because it's really not the idea to stretch the knee, but try to get the stretch into your outer hip and glutes. Okay, last 15 seconds here. And slowly come up in this stretch as well. Walk it out a little bit, move your legs. And that's it. Hopefully the body is feeling happy. 